Welcome to this short presentation on the clinical sign of coughing. In this presentation, we're going to go through a definition, the way to categorize cough, what are the most common etiologies or causes of coughs, and then finally, we'll have a look at the mechanism of what causes a cough reflex. So, the sign of cough or a coughing sign is essentially one of the most common presentations that you will see to primary practice. So it's very important that you understand what it is, what causes it, and the mechanism behind it. So a cough essentially is part of your immune system. It's an innate response to something that's coming in, irritating, and causing problems in your airway. And what it's what your body's trying to reduce to, what your body's trying to do is get that thing out, get that irritation out, get that inflammation out, get that foreign body out, so you can enhance your gas exchange. So that's what it's there for. Now, with all reflexes, there's usually three parts to a reflex. There is the sensory component, there's the control center, and then there's the efferent component, which is the motor. And that's no different to the cough reflex, which we'll cover when we do the mechanism. But let's first start on the way to categorize coughing. Okay, so the way that we categorize is usually based on duration. And if you know the duration, then you can look in each part of it, different ways that you can provide diagnosis. So starting off with the acute cough. So this is a cough that's usually been around for less than three weeks. Okay, so less than three weeks would be categorized as an acute cough. Now, there's two main subcategories to an acute cough. There, there are the infectious, I'll just put infection, and non-infection. Okay, so this is, what we're doing now is just categorizing an acute cough into two parts, infectious based or non-infectious base. By far, the most common cause of an acute cough is infectious base, and by far the most common is viral, okay, which is upper respiratory infections, okay. So, quite commonly, it's going to be the common cold. So, this is rhinosinusitis, okay. So, rhinosinusitis from a vir viral origin is the common cold, and by far, that's the most common cause of an acute cough, and that's generally going to be driven by an inflammatory basis, okay? You can also have slightly lower infection, which when it starts to go a bit lower, will go into a bronchitis cause, but this is going to be more an acute bronchitis, not a chronic bronchitis. And again, by far, this is a viral origin. Now, in a pediatric setting, Common causes of infection that would lead to an acute cough, again, less than three weeks, would be things like pertussis or whooping cough or bronchiolitis, okay? So that's essentially, bacteria will come in, but it's a bit lower, maybe 2% of it, so viral is much more common. Let's look at a non-infectious cause of an acute cough. These are usually considered exacerbations, so exacerbations of other underlying causes, like... COPD, okay, in that I'll put asthma, also exacerbations of congestive heart failure. So, you know, a high portion of people with heart failure, congestive heart failure, you know, something like 70% of them will have a cough. And if, if you are going into a phase of decompensation, so the heart's not compensating, or the system's not compensating for the heart failure, you could move into an acute cough, okay? And COPD being, you know, chronic bronchitis, emphysema, or asthma, when it flares up, okay, so when there's more mucus, where there's more bronchoconstriction, when there's more inflammation, that's going to lead to an acute cough. But this is a non-infectious basis. Another, another one just to be aware of before we move on is pulmonary embolism. So, you know, 30 to 40% of people with a PE will present with a cough, okay? So there we go, that's the acute the, the acute cough, less than three weeks, and these are some common ways of knowing what's behind it. Now, when we move to the subacute, so this is essentially a duration of three to eight weeks, okay? Now, by far, the most common cause of a subacute cough is post-infectious. Post so really, what's happening here, so post-infectious, really everything we saw here is still lingering around 
which leads to this ongoing cough. So why are you getting a cough lasting three to eight weeks? Well, because you've had an infection, your whole respiratory tract is still, so the epithelial cells are still inflamed. You probably got the goblet cells still producing a bit too much mucus. So that's causing irritation mechanically on the receptors, which we'll go through in a second when we do the me mechanism. But also you have the nerves that's taking information away from the, the respiratory tract um, to the brain. They're hypersensitized. So these are you know, generally why you're having a, um, a cough from a post-infectious. The, the, the infection might be gone or pretty much gone, but we've still got this underlying thing going on, which is causing the cough. Some other things just to be aware of is the use of ACE inhibitors. Okay, so an ACE inhibitor, which is a blood pe pressure medication, um, like the Prills, these could be, they could kick in after a few weeks after you've taken it and then you might get a cough, okay? So, and that might linger on for a number of weeks, which is, may come into the subcategory, it's into the subacute category. So ACE inhibitors, just be aware of, but again, by far, post-infections are the, the most common now we move to chronic. So chronic cough is anything greater than eight weeks. Okay. So anything greater than eight weeks is essentially what we considered a chronic cough. Now, easy way to remember this, there's really only four main causes of a chronic cough. But the first thing we need to eliminate is usually they'll do a chest x-ray. So you're, the doctor will do a chest x-ray, ensure that there is no underlying issue in the lungs like pneumonia. So if that's cleared, and the person's a non-smoker, and they're not taking an ACE inhibitor, there's four main causes. One, two, three, four. Okay. Firstly, this one is called upper airway cough syndrome. Okay, so approximately 34% of people with a chronic cough will fit into this category. This was previously known as post-nasal drip. So this is essentially uh, an, in an inflammation which could come from a viral, a bacterial, an, an allergy, or just irritation through irritants, chemical irritants, causes, again like we saw up here, a rhinosinusitis, which is inflammation of the nose epithelia and the sinus epithelia. That could come about, like I said, through a viral cause, through a bacterial cause, through an allergy basis, or maybe just through irritation. Now, what happens here, these cells through inflammation will start to drip down the back, which is why it was once called post-nasal drip, which is irritating the receptors lower down in the, the larynx, let's say. And this is now what we call the upper airway cough syndrome. So we've changed from the post-nasal drip to this particular syndrome because it's a spectrum basically coming from issues with the, the, rhino, the rhino, rhino sinusitis, okay, leading to that issue. So, but, but as you can see, 34% of people with chronic cough probably fits into this category. Next, uh, asthma. So, and this is what we probably consider a cough variant asthma. So about 25, a quarter of people with a chronic cough will have this underlying cough variant asthma, which just means they may not see or experience the wheeze that goes with asthma. It might just be subclinical, not that noticeable, but the cough is the dominant phenotype, which means that in asthma, we know we have a sensitization in the airway. We also have bronchoconstriction. And this is, in this case, leading to a cough rather than a kind of airway limitation. Now, another common, and this is almost another variant of asthma, is what we call a non asthmatic eosinophilic bronchitis. Okay, so I'll just say it again. Non-asthmatic eosinophil, they're the white blood cells, bronchitis. Okay, and this is about 13% of chronic cough sufferers. So what you can see, and this is a very similar presentation to asthma. Okay, so you can see almost half of chronic cough sufferers would be in an asthma-like state. Okay, the only difference with a non-asthmatic eosinophilic bronchitis, so the inflammation of the bronchioles is the underlying issue, driven by eosinophils, which are white blood cell. The only difference here is, in these guys, they're not really having any changes to the 
the bronchioles so they're not going to have a limitation in their breathing whereas the asthmatics would so if you did a pulmonary function test and you were to induce kind of a, a bronchoconstriction you'd have these guys presenting with changes in their PFTs whereas this group would not but the way that they would treat be treated would be almost the same finally we have GERD or GERD in America so that's essentially gastroesophageal reflux disease and about 20% of people with chronic cough will be this phenotype. And what's essentially happening is we've got a stomach acids coming up, regurgitating up, up the esophagus, which is then causing irritation not only to the esophagus but to the upper airways, which is causing sensitization and inflammation to these receptors which we're going to talk about and that's leading to the cough. Okay, so again quite a, a very common cause of a chronic cough. So these guys here are basically the four main causes of a chronic cough and as you can see there's obviously going to be um, ones that fall outside this but statistically they're going to fall into these four categories. Now there's a lot there but I thought what we could do just to refine easy ways to remember it is we can go here and go cough in so C-O-U-G-H-I-N-G and now we have a mnemonic to remember easy ways to remember causes of coughing. So the C you can use COPD and particularly in the COPD is asthma. Okay. O is edema. So anything that causes fluid into the lungs would cause a cough. So we saw over here Okay, bronchi bronchitis, which is inflammation and edema. We saw uh, chronic, uh, sorry, congestive heart failure would also ca cause it. Um, so anything that would put fluid into the lungs would cause a cough. U, we've got down here, so we've got upper airway cough syndrome. G, we've got GERD or GERD. H, this is... Uh, me being inventive, this is hypertensive medications, okay, and we know an antihypertensive medications are your ACE inhibitors, so ACE inhibitor, and that's your prills, okay. I is basically infections or irritation or irritants like smoke, like let's say chlorine gas, um, chili, things like that. N is this one down here, so that's non asthmatic eosinophilic bronchitis and then G it's basically a placeholder so you can either get rid of it or just put gourd in again okay and that gives you coughing which is much easier to remember as a mnemonic than try to remember all, all that stuff so let's do finally let's do the mechanism of how a cough is comes about so like all reflexes we need to have those components we need to have a sensory component we need to have a control center component and we need to have a motor component so the sensory component is down here in the epithelial cells so this is essentially lining your whole respiratory tract these are your cells here and what i've just drawn is you know epithelial cells that are ciliated now the vagus nerve is the afferent nerve so this is the the nerve that's going to innovate it and the receptors that we see are three main receptors c fibers rapidly adapting receptor fibers and slow adapt adapting receptor fibers and basically the way you should look at it is the c fibers are the most abundant they are unmyelinated but they're mostly going to respond to um, chemical driven effects so this could be irritation that things are coming down the airway and causing the irritation like acid or like um, chemicals that you've breathed in but by by far probably the most common cause of the C5 activation is an inflammation driven so where you have prostaglandins histamines bradykinins is going to activate this whereas these two the rapidly and the slow adapting receptors these are probably going to be much more mechanically driven so anywhere where you have the change in mechanical properties of the lungs so the lungs is bronchoconstricted the lungs have lots of mucus sitting on it or the lung is heavy because it's full of edema these guys will be driving because the compliance of the lungs are being changed
Okay, so in any case, these receptors would start to fire, which sends electrical signals down the vagus nerve, which goes up into the brainstem, specifically in the medulla, to an area called the tractus solitaris. Okay, now this is an area in the brainstem which has a whole lot of sensory information put into it from the visceral um, parts of your body. Okay, that's why it's vagus, but it's also going to be other parts. And this other things can actually come in to activate the cough. So it can come from your ear, it can come from your throat, it can come from your um, heart, it can, can come from your esophagus, it can come from your stomach, okay? Um, it can come from blood vessels even. So these are all going into the tractus solitaris and it can actually activate a cough. And so this is why some, in some cases you might get a cough from cleaning your ears or a cough if someone's putting um, hearing aids in their ears. So this is important just to be aware of. Or the stomach and esophagus which is driven by acid or even pericardium can cause activation of this center which can cause coughs. So, so there can be sensory inputs outside the respiratory tract that can activate this center which can cause a cough, not only from the respiratory, respiratory epithelium itself. So the tractus solitaris is this control center which will make sense of the information coming into it and then it will send this signal to the pattern regulator of the cough or the respiratory tract and this is probably a combination of ventral dorsal medulla and, pon and pons which is going to generate the output. And this is a combination of inspiratory center and expiratory. And this is the this is the component, this is the motor component of the cough. Okay, so we've done the sensory component, we've done now the control center, now we're going to generate how you produce a cough. So the inspiratory center is essentially going to go to the muscles, so nerve going to the muscles, which helps to bring or to change the, the dynamics of the lungs. So we're going to pull the diaphragm down, so that's going to be phrenic nerve. We're going to bring the chest out, external intercostals, and we're going to bring up the neck, so that's going to be the accessories. So that will do that and cause a change in the pressures in the lung, causing air to go in. But the one thing that changes with a cough is we're going to send a signal to the larynx to close it off, okay? So this is the compressive, the compressive phase of the cough. That's going to go to the... Um, recurrent laryngeal nerve, which goes to the glottis, closes off the vocal cords. That means the pressure starts to build up. As the inspiratory muscles contract, they're going to tell the expiratory muscles to now get ready to contract. This would be the abdomen and the other intercostal muscles, which is now driving this. But because the glottis is closed, we have this huge build up in pressure in your thorax, you know, over 300 millimeters of mercury. And then what we do, we move to the expiratory phase where we open the larynx and that air flies out and we get that cough. And that hopefully is to do what it's there to design to do, is to clear stuff out, get rid of irritation, get rid of fluid, get rid of edema, get rid of anything that's causing a buildup of um, fluid or change in that gas exchange. And that's why we have this reflex. So, hopefully now, what you've seen is we now know a definition of a cough. We know it's a reflex. We know why we need it. We know the categories in duration, or acute, subacute, chronic. We know an easier mnemonic being coughing. So we've got C, COPD and asthma. O, the edema causes. U, upper airway cough syndrome. G, gourd. H being ACE inhibitors, I infections, irritations, and N being non-asthmatic eosinophilic bronchitis. And then we've seen the mechanism behind it. So this is what leads to a cough.